Distinguished representatives of the media will now follow the press conference of the President of the Government of the Republic of North Macedonia, Mr. Dimitar Kovacevsky, and the Secretary General, Jens Stoltenberg. In the beginning, I invite Prime Minister Kovacevsky to address you. Distinguished media, distinguished citizens, I am honored to host today the great friend of North Macedonia, the Secretary General of NATO, Jens Stoltenberg. Dear Jens, welcome to Skopje. This time, to our mutual satisfaction, I believe, since this is your first visit as a Secretary General of NATO to North Macedonia as a full-fledged NATO member state. Today we discussed the alliance, the Euro integration of the country and the region, but also the world security and peace and the most significant developments in our region, in Ukraine and in the Gaza Strip. Most of all, being part of NATO means safety, prosperity and security of the country and its citizens. And that is why North Macedonia continues to invest all its capacities in strengthening and maintaining the status of a trusted ally in the alliance. As one of the younger members, we committed ourselves seriously and achieved the fastest military integration compared to any other member state that joined the alliance. This past year, we placed a particular focus on strengthening our ability to deal with hybrid threats and cyber defense, and I'm, for which I, I want to extend my gratitude to the Ministry of Defense and Ministry of the Interior, which in cooperation with NATO had the full support of our allies in these great challenges we faced in the beginning of the year. In a few months, we will reach the, reach the planned 2 percent of the GDP that were agreed at the, at the annual summit in Vilnius, where we also agreed on the most robust NATO defense plan. We also continue our contribution to the NATO missions in Kosovo and Iraq and to the NATO battle groups in uh, Latvia, Romania and Bulgaria. Area. With our unity as allies, we proved that the alliance is stronger and more numerous than ever before and in the year that brought the greatest challenge for the alliance since its establishment. We continue with our strong support to Ukraine in the fight for its freedom and peace for its people and against the horrors that the Russian military aggression is still causing on the territory of Ukraine. With the same dedication, we continue to act as a factor of stability in the region for which we are rightly recognized. The security of the Western Balkans and the return of diplomacy as a basic constructive way to build and develop good neighborly relations is the spirit we stand for. The stability of the region is extremely and fundamentally important more than ever before. That is why our priority is Euro integration, above all the integration of North Macedonia but also of the region. We must have no obstacles and no breaks on that road and we'll do whatever it takes to see it through the end until our membership in the European Union by 2030. Advocating for the security, peace and better quality of life of our citizens cannot and must not be hindered by political calculations of destructive politicians. We have all witnessed the difference since we became a member of NATO. Above all, North Macedonia participates and decides on regional, European and global security equally and, of course, actively. But membership in NATO also means economic development. With the stability and security provided by NATO membership, North Macedonia is recognized by investors as a good destination, and the numbers speak best for this regarding foreign direct investments, increase in number of employees and average salary that was published today and it is the highest in the history of the country and the reduced number of unemployed. That is why the European way is the right way, also as the NATO integration, which was the right integration for the country that happened two years ago. Our citizens deserve to be part of the Union of the most developed, richest states, with which we still achieve economic progress, but also social justice and supreme rule of democracy and law. 
And the analysis and experiences of the country before and after joining the EU show that there will be development if we stay on this path. Any support is welcome and desired, and here I want to personally extend my gratitude to the Secretary General of NATO for his strong commitment to the Euro-Atlantic integration of North Macedonia and the Western Balkans as whole. One strategic goal with NATO has been fulfilled. I believe that with your help and with the help of our friends from the Euro-Atlantic community, we will succeed in fulfilling the second strategic goal, membership in the EU, and meet the demands and expectations of the citizens for a better, more prosperous and richer life. In the very end, I want to thank for the exceptionally good cooperation with the Secretary General of NATO, with his assistance. Part of them are here today with us. We succeeded in overcoming numerous challenges with them in the recent years, in the past three years, and out of which I was president of the government for two. We do this very successfully, and I can only speak of the daily communications that we have with the Secretary General also on the level of ministries of Def ministers of defense, ministers of interior, who participate at the meetings in NATO, on the level of ministerial meetings. And of course, I want to avail myself of this opportunity to thank our ambassador, Dan Atalevsky, who is our first ambassador to the mission in NATO, and uh, who performs his uh, tasks and duties on a very high level. Thank you, everyone, and thank you. Thanks to our guest. Uh, he's not guest. He's a secretary general, and we are a member state of NATO. So Jens is practically host uh, in uh, member state of NATO. Now I invite the secretary general to address. Prime Minister Kovacevsky. Premier Kovacevsky. Uh, great to see you again, and great to be back in uh, Skopje. And uh, thank you so much for your warm uh, welcome. Later today, uh, I will address the National Assembly. Uh, this is really a high honor, and I'm profoundly grateful. The Republic of North Macedonia is a valued NATO ally. You contribute to, to the security and the stability of the Western Balkans through our K4 peacekeeping mission in Kosovo. You are committed to spending 2% of GDP uh, on defense next year. And North Macedonia has strongly denounced Russia's war against Ukraine. You have joined the European Union uh, uh, in imposing sanctions on Moscow, and you provide military and financial support to Ukraine, and you provide uh, forces to different NATO missions and operations. So you are really a highly value, a valued ally that makes a difference in your contributions to our alliance. NATO can rely on North Macedonia, and North Macedonia can rely on uh, NATO. The alliance guarantees your security. You are covered by NATO's air policing. Fighter jets uh, from Greece and Italy patrol your skies to keep you safe. This is NATO solidarity in action. The security uh, of the Western Balkans is vital to NATO. And there are causes for concern. Tensions have risen uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. I encourage political leaders there to refrain from divisive and secessionist uh, rhetoric, and instead uh, concentrate their efforts on reconciliation and a peaceful future. In Kosovo, we have seen recent incidents of serious violence, including an acceptable attack on K4 peacekeepers. Those responsible must be held to account. Belgium and Pristina must engage in the EU-facilitated dialogue. This is the only way to reach solutions that respect the rights of all communities. We also see authoritarian states seeking to undermine our freedom and way of life, including here in the Western Balkans, spreading disinformation, sowing division and undermining democracy. Our response must be to work even more closely together in NATO through our military presence and our cooperation with allies and partners. We are a strong force for stability uh, in the region. So we're going, once again, Prime Minister, it's great to be back. Uh, I have been here many times before, but this is my first visit, as you said, as Secretary General, after you uh, become a, a full-fledged member. So therefore, it is a special honor to be here today. Thank you so much.
Now we'll hear from Alsa TV questions. Thank you. Good afternoon. Luca Andreev from Alsa TV to the Secretary General Stoltenberg and Prime Minister Kovacevsky. How do you interpret last week's uh, statement of the Ukrainian President Zelensky that he has information that uh, Russia has a plan for destabilization, military destabilization on the Balkans? Have you contacted Kiev about uh, the information and uh, what do you see as the strongest uh, security risk in the region? I will go first. First of all, the information we exchange and are exchanged between the institutions inside the country, but also with the allies in NATO, is that there is no threat for the security and stability of our country. These are questions on which I need to underline that we and the other member states of NATO are fighting against the Russian influence in the region. We are a NATO country, and I convince you that, uh, assure you that uh, the institutions are doing their job, and we must not forget that all entities and political stakeholders have an obligation to contribute to joint peace and stability. Of course, the influence from the third countries, including the Russian influence, is existent in the region, and they are always trying to find uh, someone who thinks alike in certain political parties and in certain organizations, but they are not on the level that our institutions have, that the member states of NATO have, and uh, that our security services have, and they cannot cause the stabilization of our country. See any imminent uh, military threat uh, from uh, Russia against any uh, NATO ally or uh, region. Uh, but of course, we remain uh, vigilant. We uh, monitor closely what Russia is uh, doing, and we remain united. And uh, we have military presence in this region with K4, with uh, a headquarters in Sarajevo, and actually also an office in Belgrade. And uh, we are uh, ready to quickly reinforce. Uh, and to do what is necessary to, depend, to de defend and protect uh, every ally against any threat. But again, we don't see any imminent military threat against any NATO ally. Uh, then we continue uh, to uh, reiterate our consistent uh, uh, message uh, to Russia that they should refrain from the aggressive actions uh, against neighbors and, of course, stop uh, the military aggression against, uh, uh, against uh, Ukraine. Uh, and uh, they should respect international law and also the right for every nation um, to choose its own path. Because this is, we have to remember that one of the reasons why President Putin went to war against Ukraine was that he didn't want Ukraine to join the alliance. And he wanted more than that. He actually wanted uh, NATO to guarantee no further NATO enlargement. He wanted NATO to remove all its forces from the eastern part of the alliance. Uh, Putin is getting exactly the opposite. It's getting more NATO, more NATO presence uh, in the eastern part of the alliance, and now two new NATO members, Finland and uh, Sweden. Uh, so, uh, so this is a big strategic defeat for President Putin, and, uh, and uh, uh, it means it shows, demonstrates again that it was a big mistake to invade uh, Ukraine. And I welcome the support from North Macedonia, from NATO allies to continue to support Ukraine. We just had new announcements today from Germany uh, and also recently from the United States uh, of a more uh, military support to Ukraine. So uh, we will be there to continue to support Ukraine in the right for self-defense uh, against the Russian aggression. Thank you, Simona Serbinovska from MIA. I have a question for the Prime Minister. What are your expectations from the December summit of EU and what are the concrete benefits that we'll have for our Western Balkan growth plan? Thank you. Regarding the growth plan for the Western Balkan, this is an exceptionally important plan that was uh, requested from us. And it is a plan with which uh, the citizens and the companies will feel the benefits 
from the European Union before the full-fledged membership. I can only give one example that although we are not a full-fledged member state of the EU, we still have a liberal uh, visa regime as the other countries from the Western Balkan, and this is one of the benefits uh, due to the regular and good relations with the EU. However, this plan in practice offers 6 billion euros in funds for the Western Balkan countries, 2 billion in grant and 4 in favorable loans that in practice are on such level because they will be guaranteed by the European Union and that is why the interest rates will be much lower. And um, this will be related to reforms in the countries that are candidate countries for EU membership. And additionally, they will be intended for projects that will increase the economic and political cooperation between the Western Balkan countries. In that way, through the investments in these reforms, in these projects, annually 10 percent due to the increased cooperation of the region and uh, increased cooperation with the shared common European market, certain parts uh, will, of the European market will be open to industries from our countries. This will be 10 percent higher in GDP and economies of the world, and in 10 years this will mean that we will have double the size of the economies of the Western Balkan. So this is a plan that offers positive effects over the economy, the living standard of the citizens, and the operation of the companies. Of course, on the other hand, it uh, comes with uh, an obligation uh, in terms of reforms for improvement of the society of our country, but also of the other countries in the region. Regarding the December summit, the December summit will show that what will happen there, it depends on us. If we make the decision that is our obligation regarding the inclusion of uh, other people in the in our constitution, then the decision at the December summit will be positive and North Macedonia will open the chapters. And that is why I say that now it depends on us, because the European Union delivered. We had the first uh, intergovernmental conference, the first intergovernmental conference into Macedonian for signing of the Frontex Agreement into Macedonian language with all other languages of the EU, approved by all EU member states. This was never the case before. So this means that they delivered on their promises, and now it remains on us to deliver our obligation. Regarding another aspect uh, from the December summit and what it will be like, it not only depends on us, but it will show in what way it depends on each of us, whether those who have always been against integration of the country into NATO and EU, this time will outgrow themselves. If they outgrow themselves, at the December summit, we will have a decision with which North Macedonia will open the chapters from the negotiation framework and chapters for accession to the EU. If they do not overcome themselves, then we will see the 11 summits of NATO and 11 summits of EU while well, they were in power and when nothing happened, when a decision was not made, when one millimeter we did not move ahead regarding integration. We have a situation when Nikola Gruevsky was replaced with Christian Mitskovsky because all the rest remained the same. The Minister of Interior, the Minister of Finance, they are the same as they were before in the surroundings of the president of Omaro Dopomanes, so we will have only one president replaced with another one with the same approach to the politics. And the last question, Cito TV. 
Good afternoon, Ivan Sokolovic, Mr. Stoltenberg. You visited several countries from the Western Balkan and your tour will finish here in Skopje. From what we saw, neither of these countries in the region you did not address in the assembly, and this is not the case with uh, Macedonia. You will address today before the members of the parliament. Is this a message in terms of the process of the amendments to the constitution? And what message do you send? that the regional uh, meeting of the, uh, the, of the leaders is happening in Skopje. So of uh, North Macedonia as a highly valued uh, NATO ally, and I welcome very much that uh, uh, the government and the National Assembly is ready to host uh, me, but also the summit tomorrow with the leaders uh, from uh, NATO allies in the, the region. And of course, it is a great honor to be able to address uh, the National Assembly in Skopje once again. Um, so far, I have visited partner nations, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, um, um, uh, Serbia, uh, and, uh, and also, also in, um, in, uh, in Kosovo. Uh, now I'm in a, in a NATO ally, uh, allied country, and therefore it's also uh, natural that this is the place where we have the big meeting with uh, uh, the heads of state and government from the other uh, uh, NATO allies in the region. Uh, so this is a recognition of the importance, the, the, the role that North Macedonia plays in this alliance uh, and also how much we value that you are now a full-fledged member. I have addressed the National Assembly before, but of course this is the first time I addressed the National Assembly uh, as, as, as a full-fledged member, uh, North Macedonia being a full-fledged member of the alliance. And, and I follow that development very closely. And I would like to commend uh, you for the courage, the, the wisdom, uh, and the bravery, actually, that was needed to ensure that you, become a, a full, uh, that you became a full-fledged uh, member of the alliance. The press bar agreement was not easy, but it was good for uh, North Macedonia, it was good for the whole region, and it was good for uh, NATO. And uh, this is about security, but it's also that security helps to promote prosperity. With stability and prosperity, there, will be, there are actually more investments, uh, more jobs, uh, and uh, more foreign direct uh, uh, investments in uh, North Macedonia. So there's a link between security and uh, prosperity, which I think has been demonstrated by the fact that you now are a full, not that you are now a full member of the land. So I'm looking forward to the meeting this afternoon with the assembly and also the summit tomorrow. This will be the end of today's press conference. Thank you for your attention.